Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear learners this is a video for the subject of education for the course of bachelors in education and for the paper of educational technology part 2 this video is based on the emerging technologies and issues in educational technology and in this lecture we will be discussing the fundamental elements and characteristic features of the keller plan or personalized system of instruction also called as psi this video lecture is recorded by dr iram khan the course coordinator and the presenter of this video is dr iram khan from jamia millia islamia new delhi the academic expert or the reviewer of this video is professor nasreen mujib from aligarh muslim university aligarh this video is produced under the project dts swayam prabha channels of ministry of education government of india hello dear students i am dr iram khan assistant professor at institute of advanced studies in education faculty of education jamia millia islamia new delhi today we will be having a discussion on the topics related to emerging technologies and issues in educational technology and this discussion will be based on the keller plan or personalized system of instruction or psi and here we will be discussing the fundamental elements and the characteristic features of the keller plan or psi the objectives of this session are to discuss the fundamental elements of personalized system of instruction or psi or also called as the keller plan then to elaborate the characteristic features of personalized system of instruction or psi or the keller plan so according to the keller uh, plan the effective instruction should incorporate certain principles and here there are five principles of the personalized system of instruction or the keller plan let us try to discuss all these uh, principles the first principle says that there should be written material or the principle of written materials so the primary presentation of new content should be through written texts given in the form of media available at the time uh, when the keller plan was uh, basically being developed there were various forms and those forms were the lectures the movies the audio recordings uh, even the television and radio were present and also there were printed or the paper based texts so paper based texts uh, gave the students the greatest freedom books and the texts uh, which are in the form of printed texts they were portable and can be read at uh, a person's own pace and can be started and stopped at any time can be easily reviewed and can be marked by the reader like if a teacher is uh, or the reader uh, who is uh, reading the text is willing to mark anything that was also easier in the case of the written text as an application of behaviorism the keller plan was meant to maximize the number of operant behaviors that could be reinforced this could best be done with written materials rather than in the uh, form of any other material so so uh, we can see that the learner uh, can become a passive observer in other forms of media but in case of the printed material or the text material the learner will be actively involved in the uh, reading process and even the markings and all those things the learner is going to do so that is why the first principle which is encompassing the scalar plan is about the written materials then the next is the units of the content so the subject matter should be broken down into certain uh, meaningful units separate meaningful units these units could have various kinds of relationship for example the first unit should provide the prerequisites for uh, making the second or Uh, the following unit understood so uh, in simple words we can say that the first unit is going to correspond the second unit so whatever we are going to teach or we are going to study in the first unit is going to 
uh, be useful for understanding the next unit or the second unit and then likewise the second unit uh, would provide deeper elaboration of a uh, preceding unit so maybe the second unit unit is going to give more details uh, or uh, uh, assistance in the reading of the third unit so in this case uh, we can say that all the units are corresponding to each other and in any case the specific learning objectives should be definable for each discrete unit of content so the unit of contents should be very much linked with each other and the judicious uh, distribution of content of the entire subject matter should be done so that the first unit should correspond to the second and second to the third and likewise the entire subject matter should be divided then the next principle is related to self-paced instruction which is uh, somehow the essence of the personalized system of instruction here the students should be allowed to advance through the course material at their own pace while an uh, instructor or the teacher might specify the order in which the learning units are completed the learners should decide when and what rate they learn what what would be the pace in which they have to go ahead and learn so learners could move through a course as quickly or slowly as they choose to so it would be the discretion of the learner that what what would be the pace of their learning the next principle is related to unit mastery so students must satisfy a mastery requirement in one unit before proceeding to the next as we have seen in the uh, previous uh, uh, unit or the previous uh, case uh, of the principle where units of contents were seen so we require to have mastery in the first unit before moving to the second units in the same way this, this unit mastery this principle of unit mastery says that students must satisfy a mastery requirement in one unit before proceeding to the next and in case of uh, um, this uh, division of units uh, in uh, program system of instruction uh, we have more than one equivalent form of assessment so the mastery has been gained or not is be is going to be assessed by various means and methods for example, uh, there will be three quizzes of equal difficulty or three primary sources uh, or data sets to be analyzed. So the students must demonstrate mastery of a unit's objectives to a certain level of quality. If the student does not reach the threshold, they are redirected to unit materials, the other materials uh, which they have to go through. So there can be uh, supplement uh, um, material or there can be certain instructions which will be provided that if you are not in a position to answer this particular question, then please move to um, or refer to so and so part of the uh, unit or uh, the previous unit. And then they can take an equivalent form of the unit assessment and if they pass that unit assessment then they can move to another so from the point of view of behaviorism demonstrating mastery and being allowed to continue to a subsequent unit was presumed to be reinforcement but like we, we can say that in case of reinforcement there is some sort of motivation which is given so here also once uh, the student is allowed to move from one unit after gaining mastery to the second unit we can say that uh, somehow the reinforcement is also uh, provided in the form of uh, allowance of uh, moving from one unit to another to the student. Then the next principle is the principle related to the proctors. And here I'm talking about the human proctors or the human um, evaluators. You can say that those uh, people who oversee the entire process. So the human proctors are an important part of the Keller plan. The proctor can be an external uh, person uh, to the course. Uh, this person can be an adult or uh, a peer member, peer member who is brought in to the course from the external sources. Or it can be an internal uh, proctor. Uh, this internal proctor can be the advanced students in the course who are doing well. They have completed all units to, uh, to that particular point and have good interpersonal skills so these students can also be the proctors so the proctors were the uh, the uh, students or those people uh, who have got mastery in that 
particular unit they would certify the mastery they would uh, discuss the areas of weakness and direct the students to the next units so in in terms of the behaviorist uh, philosophy or behaviorist psychology uh, where we always are concerned about the bringing of uh, the conditioned behaviors under the control of uh, natural reinforcers uh, interactions with the proctors were presumed to provide uh, natural social reinforcers that encourage the learning behaviors and perseverance in the course so uh, even in case of uh, such type of courses uh, we can see that at times once we are done with the uh, the assignment or whatever uh, ass assessment question is given to us if we, we have completed the uh, the assignment very properly the system will ask us to evaluate few of the assignments of our peer group members and this is going to be uh, marked so if we are doing the assignment corrections the checking of the assignments and giving the feedback that is also being evaluated so even the the uh, course uh, co the participant of the of a course can become the proctor in few of the cases so this is something which is uh, which is allowing a lot of liberty to the course developer because uh, this course developer can take the help from the uh, the advanced students also so this is uh, somehow a very nice feature of this uh, keller plan or program system of instruction so these were the five principles the first principle the written materials related to written materials then units of content then unit mastery uh, self-paced instruction and the principles related to the doctors. So uh, if we try to compare the um, personalized system of instruction with the traditional teaching, we can see that in case of traditional teaching, there is same pace and different learning, uh, which is the key factor. But in case of the PSI, uh, basically it advocates different pace, same learning. So the pace is decided by the learner itself. The learner is going to take hold or uh, is going to decide that what will be the pace in which this person is going to study the same content which the peer group member is going to study in a different pace. So a traditional course might have all students follow the same weekly lectures, exercises, activities, and any other thing which is given as the part of the course and then they will sit and um, give the end of the course exam at the same date but possibly with huge variation in learning outcomes because we can see that once the exam results come uh, of the traditional type of courses there are few students who have achieved more than 90 percent or uh, they are going to get distinctions but there will be few students or a group of students who are weaker ones, uh, they would have uh, just achieved 55% or 50% marks. So in a course which is going to run according to PSI or the Keller plan, all students must pass a high threshold of achievement on each module within the course. For instance, every student because everything will be self-paced and they can revisit the units which are given so every student at least is going to get the 90 percent marks on whatever is decided by the course developer if the course developer has decided that 80 percent is the uh, passing marks of my course then at least 80 percent or in few of the cases even i have seen in in the courses uh, which are uh, which are actually developed by john hopkins university or any other such type of university the passing marks are 90 percent so that much is to be achieved by every student either a weak student or a very uh, high achiever student because the course this personalized system of instruction provides a liberty to go uh, back and forth and study the material which is provided to the best extent and then they give the assessment or the exam and achieve that much marks if 90 percent is the passing marks then you have to achieve the 90 percent marks and then only you will be in a position to move to the next part of the course so the difference between weak or the strong uh, students would then be uh, like it will it is going to elope so 
even the uh, weaker students are going to get the same type of marks as the stronger ones because everybody is getting the time according to their own uh, capability, their own need, and then they can finish the course either quicker or uh, uh, if they need more time, they can actually linger on uh, reading or uh, studying in the course. So this is somehow um, decided by the student itself. More time, if a weaker student wants more time, she can take it. If the student who is very much advanced, if uh, she can pursue the course in less time, that is also allowed. So this one is somehow a very democratic system of uh, studying or learning because it is personalized and it, it has got uh, a lot of liberty given to the course taker. So the Keller plan or the personalized system of instruction is distinguished with some of its major characteristics. And these characteristics are somehow important in terms of giving a basic teacher which is very much innate to the program system of instruction or the Keller plan. So let us try to see that what are those features, those important characteristics which the PSI or the Keller plan encompasses. So the first one is the introduction of the personal element. This name PSI or the personalized system of instruction basically it gives a total personal touch to the process of instruction and it is already innate in the name of PSI. So personalized system of instruction. Here the learners are served in their personal capacities face to face and one by one by the teacher or the proctors. And there is more emphasis on the personal social relationship between the teacher and the taught or the student in comparison to the traditional method of instruction. So the personalized touch or the personal touch is the first element which we can say that is to be considered the most important characteristic feature of the Keller plan. The next element is the mastery learning. In case of the personalized system of instruction, basically the entire system aims for attaining mastery level on the part of each and every student, regardless of the student's relative standing in the class. Either the student can be a weaker uh, student or a, a very up to date student, but here we are going to attain mastery on both of the students part. So here a student tries to go independently on the path of learning and the student strives hard to gain complete mastery over the subject matter of a particular curriculum or a unit. This student is allowed to take the task of the next unit and is assigned grade or rewarded only when the student has got the required mastery over the previous unit and not an account of uh, the relative position in the class. So basically, uh, position is not at all important here. Here, uh, the importance is given to the mastery which is gained by every student. Every student on his or her own pace or uh, capability is going to attain the mastery and that is the most important thing which is taken care of here in the program system of instruction. The next feature is the feature related to self-pacing. Here uh, we can see that the Keller plan allows all the learners of a group or the class to proceed on the path of learning according to their own pace depending upon their background the capabilities which they have, the abilities, the level of aspirations and the motivation, motivational levels. And there are many other factors which can be uh, the part of the system of uh, this particular student. So the particular student takes a curriculum unit for the required study, works on it, and when the student thinks that now uh, there is the required mastery which is gained, then this student can undergo the relate, related unit test. So once the student feels that now I'm uh, fine with the entire material, 
then only the student will be taking this unit test and once the student will pass this test then only the student can proceed to work on the successive curriculum units and in this way the student may not um, have an account like the student is not going to suffer on account of the excessive or slow speed of the teacher or the fellow student as in this traditional method of classroom teaching where the slow learners are bound to lag behind and the bright ones are bored so because nobody is getting affected by the uh, pace of any other student so it will be a liberated uh, process where everyone is going to take the course on his or her own pace according to the uh, the the level in on which or the capabilities which are encompassed by the student so this is something which is very very important so this is uh, the element which is considered to be a very important element of the keller plan then the provision and the emphasis on the written work written work is given a lot of emphasis in the keller plan we can see if we go ahead and do any course which is uh, according to the personalized system of instruction we can actually see it very very properly that a lot of emphasis is given on the written work and we can see that in some of the traditional methods of instruction uh, a lot of emphasis is even given on the oral uh, exams but here everything which is uh, being assessed most of the times uh, the written assignments are taken so the subject matter is presented before the learner in written form the instructions are also provided to the learner in writing and there are study guides or kind of uh, study material which is available to the learners for guiding them on their path of learning which is again in written form and in now in nowadays uh, like we can find uh, the courses where there are videos so with the written material there are videos which are recorded by the uh, the course developer or the co teachers because in every course there will be many teachers there will be many proctors or the uh, students so there will be clips or explanatory videos which will be the part so the, the students are going to uh, click on the videos they will listen to the videos they will view the videos and then they will go move ahead and uh, go with the written material so the written instruction material is available in various forms and styles they can be in the form of a program text in in a form of ordinary text summarized briefs uh, specially designed curriculum units uh, self learning modules and in case uh, there are you know, videos then uh, this the it will be depending on the course developer that if she is developing a video related to it that can also be the part of this particular system and for hel helping a particular learner to make uh, uh, the use of uh, all these material according to his or her need the teaching learning situation all these things will be properly instructed so the students are provided with written unit tests for testing their acquisition of mastery over the learning task so whenever the assessment is going to be taken either it will be in the form of uh, the mcq test or the written assignments will be given but they have to perform some of the things related to that uh, particular subject matter in the form of written assignments and then only they will be moving ahead so this is the Uh, uh, again a very important characteristic feature so the next feature is related to limiting the use of lecture or oral communication in case of the personalized system of instruction attempts are made to reduce the importance of the lecture method and verbal communication in the traditional method of instruction usually we find a lot of uh, lecture based um, dominating a type of classes where a lot of verbalism can be seen so the entire scene of the teaching learning process is dominated by the lecturing the students are made to listen or in some of the cases watch the demonstration work carried out by the teacher and uh, in somehow all these processes which are happening uh, the teacher is working and the students are very much passively seeing or listening to the entire thing 
But in this case of personalized system of instruction, this type of passive transformation of message or information is not allowed. The lectures, demonstrations, and the verbal communications are allowed to the extent of playing the role of a motivator, instructor, or guide rather than acting as a source of critical information or knowledge by the, the course developer. So here, the use of multimedia is encouraged for the appropriate flow of communication and for getting in touch with a variety of learning sources on the part of the individual learners. So we can see a lot of uh, uh, material in the form of videos, but they are also somehow going to motivate the students. So they are not passive videos if the videos or the multimedia is being used. So in PSI, a learner is free to make use of all types of audiovisual presentations. Uh, they can go for making different models, graphic materials, pictures. Uh, they can also make use of films or tapes or teaching machines, computers, or any other such device as a source of learning and also as a mode of intercommunication. In few of the cases, I have seen that uh, the assessment was requiring a kind of interview with somebody. And if uh, the, we are taking an interview and then we are uh, writing the script of that interview here in, uh, in the assignment, we need to record the video uh, or the audio of that particular interview. So there is a requirement of a recorder. So it happens and it depends on what type of assignment or what type of activity is being done. So it depends on the student and also the activity and what type of device the student is going to use here to complete the assignment or to do the activity which is desired by the course developer or the teacher or the proctor here in the course. The next is the provision of appropriate reinforcement. In case of the Keller plan or the personalized system of instruction, basically it makes provision for timely and frequent reinforcement to the individual learners. The individual learner is free to work on the assigned learning units with his or her own pace. And the learner is also free to test um, the comprehension and the mastery level through the unit test as and when it is uh, desired by the learner. So when the learner feels that now I am done with the studying and I can go for the test or the assessment, the learner is allowed to go for it. The feedback which is provided by the result of this test provides the learner the adequate reinforcement. So if I am getting, I'm a learner and I'm getting 90% um, marks, automatically I'll get the positive reinforcement. But in case I am getting some sort of 50% uh, marks or 55% marks, then I will be a little bit negatively reinforced. And then I have to work again on the unit uh, in which I have to give the test again and I have to, uh, to get the marks which are desired by the course. So there is no restriction of any kind or um, there, is, there is no any kind of terms or uh, there is no any time schedule or frequency for taking these tests and getting the knowledge about uh, this, the, uh, the progress or the learning path. Even in case a student is taking the test multiple times, then also the percentage or the marks which the student is going to gain at the end is not affected. So it is, it is not at all that if you are taking the test multiple times and suppose a student has taken the test for the first time and gained 90% marks, then also this 90% is going to be counted. But if another student is taking multiple tests, multiple times the same test and uh, at least five times she gives the test and then she gets 90% marks, the second student is also 90% and the first student is also the 90%. So this learning path, the frequency of giving the test, everything is basically liberated. And it is up to the student that how she or he is going to take up the entire process. In this way, uh, we can actually say that the personalized system of instruction is very much capable of providing sufficient reinforcement and feedback 
to the individual learner, both in terms of frequency and appropriate timings. Somehow, uh, it gives a cue that where I'm lacking, where I have to study more, and what are the points which I have to revisit. And then I have, need to give the test for the second time. And if I am getting, for the first time, if I have got 55% marks, marks, and uh, second time, if I get 70% marks, automatically I'll get some positive reinforcement. And then I will be reinforced enough to go and study and give the exam for the third time and gain the 90% marks. So in this way, there is appropriate reinforcement which is given by the system itself to the learner. The next uh, characteristic feature is related to the use of the proctors. This is a distinctive feature of the personalized system of instruction. Uh, this is its mechanism. And why this mechanism uh, is actually uh, in place? Because it utilizes the services of the student leaders known as proctors in helping the student learners attain the mastery over the given subject. So these proctors are those students designated as such who in spite of their average abilities acquire mastery over the curriculum, the contents much earlier than the other fellow learners. So they are given the necessary guidance and training for supervising and guiding the learning path or uh, they can follow the, uh, the advice of the course developer and they can actually supervise the learners, the other learners. So they provide a big helping hand to the teacher for meeting the big requirements of PSI because in case of the Keller plan or personalized system of instruction, because a lot of assessment work is, is to be taken care of and a, a lot of students are there and every student is having separate uh, and individual needs. So if there are proctors, in the form of these uh, advanced learners, then it becomes a very easy and swift process for the teacher. Otherwise, it will become a, a difficult thing to handle for the single teacher. So the face-to-face, one-to-one interaction and personal guidance is only possible through a sizable group of proctors. So they provide very much help in the task of tutoring, providing personal social contact, uh, then also in uh, in terms of uh, uh, making assessments like taking the unit test, then immediately scoring it. We can make an automation uh, in case of MCQs and all. But in case of the uh, written assignments or the assignments which are uh, subjective in nature, there is a requirement of immediate scoring and a human being is required in this case to, to do the scoring. So providing timely feedback, reinforcement and encouragement, as well as motivating the individual students for raising their performance level to the set mastery level. So all these tasks can be done in an effective way only with the help of uh, the fellow students, which, uh, which are uh, uh, the part of the personalized system of instruction as the compulsory part. So this is the next characteristic feature. Reducing the problem of wastage and stagnation is the next characteristic feature. In PSI, the stress is laid down on the acquisition of the set mastery level by the individual learner. So there is no time limit which is fixed for the attainment of uh, all this entire process. When one person attains this level with regard to the learning of a particular unit, then only this person is permitted to proceed further on the subsequent unit. And in this way, for an individual learner, the learning is almost continuous. This learner does not have to waste any time for the sake of others. So if I have done my task, I am already uh, done with the entire reading, I can move ahead. I don't have to wait for my fellow students. So in this way, uh, the learning process goes on continuously. Whether the teacher or the fellow students are not aligned, then also I can move ahead. If I am done, I can move ahead. So here in this case, there is no any uh, repeating or there is no any uh, waiting for uh, any of the classmates or any of those uh, the lectures or anything. So particular time, 
uh, or the particular class goes on with the pace and there is no any wastage of time or there is no any repetition or unnecessary lingering on so in this case even if i am done with all the units i can go for the annual or semester examination and i can actually complete the course much ahead of my other fellow classmates so if i am very well learned and i am just uh, in a position to give the exams uh, in after one month or two months if this is a six months course and i am in a position to give the exams the final exams in two months it is also allowed but it is not allowed in case of the traditional system of instruction so in this way the personalized system of instruction helps in reducing and checking the ill effects of the problem of wastage and stagnation faced by the learners in the traditional system in the traditional system we cannot move ahead if the fellow students are not in a position to complete or if suppose this the the course is of 6 months then we have to actually do the course in 6 months only but in this case in case of the keller plan we can complete the course in whatever time we are required like we required and uh, we can actually complete the learning and the assessment so it is up to us so there is no any wastage of time or stagnation involved in this personalized system of instruction now we come to the role of the teacher in case of the psi it requires a significant change in the role of the teacher as played by this teacher in the traditional system of instruction here the teacher does not merely remain a source of information basically the, the role of a teacher is not confined to the imparting of knowledge and the information to the students rather this teacher is required to provide individualized and personalized instruction to the students so in this case the role of the teacher actually goes on in a very different direction so mere lecturing or demonstrating the things in the class does not meet the requirements of this type of instruction this teacher has to arrange for suitable learning material learning environment timely and frequent reinforcement and the feedback to all the individual learners and add a personal social element in the teaching learning process the teacher is supposedly to act as a capable manager of the learning task carried out by all the students and in this way the responsibilities of this teacher as a teacher are uh, basically greatly enhanced it is uh, the responsibilities are greatly enhanced here in this personalized system of instruction so somehow a little bit more work is to be done by the teacher if the teacher is willing to give the course or the content in the personalized system of instruction this was all about the characteristic features let us try to summarize what we have studied today in today's session we have seen the five principles of the personalized system of instruction and we have also seen the different characteristic features uh, which are related to the keller plan or the psi and here we have seen that there are a number of elements and the characteristics which can be uh, uh, seen as the part of the psi what are those uh, we have seen that there are many like the capability of providing a total personal touch to the process of instruction then aiming for attaining mastery learning on the part of every student then the uh, element related to the self pacing provision and emphasis on the written work limiting the use of lecture or oral communication then the provision of appropriate reinforcement and also reducing the problem of wastage and stagnation and use of proctors and also we have seen that the role of the teacher it is somehow increased the teacher is uh, a kind of facilitator the manager or the the person who is actually taking charge of the entire teaching learning process in this particular system so in this way we can say that the personalized system of instruction is somehow very different from the traditional system of instruction and in 
in many cases we can see that it has proved to be very useful for the learners who are having difficulty to go with the traditional system of instruction so in in those cases it can be a boon for the learners these are few of those references and the uh, suggested for the readings which can be seen for knowing more about the personalized system of instruction or the keller plan i hope that you will go through the material and uh, know more about the system which is very much useful in the present context for today this much is enough and we will see each other for another session another time thank you so much dear learners you were watching a video on emerging technologies and issues in educational technology and this lecture was based on the keller plan or personalized system of instruction or psi and we have seen the fundamental elements and the characteristic features of psi this video lecture was recorded by faculty at home during the homebound situation of covid-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources technical errors if any are unintentional and may please be ignored for any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast kindly send your email to techsupport@dth.ac.in thank you so much